good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Community Central. My name is Brian Prophet. I'm with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office, and I'm pleased to welcome you um, as we talk about yet another really cool project going on within Red Hat. Before I introduce today's guest, though, the usual housekeeping reminders, please feel free to put in any questions that you might have for our speakers in the Q&A section. We will be getting to the Q&A later um, after the presentation. And, and if you see a question you like, be sure to vote for it and get it higher on the queue. We'll be reading them in most liked order. So with the housekeeping out of the way, I'm very pleased to introduce our two guest speakers and demo artists today. Um, we have uh, Sayak Sakar and Jared Sprague, both from the Red, Red Hat Digital Experience team, and they're going to be talking to us today about spa ships. So, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, nice well, Syak, it's all yours. Take it away. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, let me just quickly uh, share my screen. Okay. So, hi everyone. Um, we'll be talking about uh, Sparship today and uh, what uh, it is, how uh, it was made, why it was made, and so on. So, uh, just to, uh, a quick introduction, uh, Sparship basically is an applications portal. Uh, it's an applications platform that aims at uh, providing delightful uh, single-page app deployments and hosting. So, before we go forward, uh, for anyone out there who is not familiar with what is a SPA, uh, the concept of SPA, the SPA basically refers to a single page application, which is uh, any web application running on the client side in a user's browser. It is loaded with a single page request and the content of the application is usually updated via JavaScript. So usually we see uh, a SPA consists of three uh, distinct components, an HTML file, a JavaScript uh, file and a, a CSS file. Uh, very common examples of these are applications developed using React.js or Vue or any Angular app. So with that out of the way, uh, we come to the topic of today's discussion that is what is Sparship? So Sparship is an application platform for deploying, hosting and managing single page applications or SPAs. Uh, it is optimized to deploy and host SPAs in a very efficient and performant way. Uh, the idea over here is to reduce uh, the developer's cycle time and friction when uh, you're deploying a SPA. Uh, so the, the, the primary concern, the primary goal of uh, SPA ship is to increase developer efficiency so that developers don't have to spend a majority of their time figuring out uh, how to uh, do the deployments or to how to uh, make the most optimized uh, deployment cycles for their applications. Sparship takes care of that. Um, and most importantly, Sparship is an open source project. Uh, it's out there on GitHub. Uh, anyone can jump in and start contributing. Uh, all contributions are most welcome. So the, the, the obvious question uh, that comes next is, but why do you need Sparship? We already have uh, so many different types of application platforms out there. Why do we need yet another one? And the answer to that question is pretty uh, simple. Uh, it's very simply put this. Efficiency. So it's, it's this kind of a joke over here uh, where we want to basically say that, you know, you don't really need an entire container uh, cargo ship to carry just a single container. You don't need a, a very big ship to carry a very small payload. It's, it's not just inefficient, it's all, it also introduces a lot of headaches of its own. Like a, a very common example would be, uh, so if you have children at home and they want to have, they want to have their own space to play, uh, you would probably build them a playhouse, but build, but getting an entire house for them to play in 
is probably going to be an overkill or probably it's going to be too much effort for something which does not really require that much effort and also it also introduces its own set of headaches and challenges and so on so this is the the problem that scholarship uh, is trying to tackle uh, you should not have to uh, have a lot of headache when it comes to deploying your applications in a efficient way you you want to be smart you want to be efficient with your uh, single page applications and the deployments so why was it needed as we just said uh, the current uh, application uh, deployment methodologies or even uh, the current options that we have are usually very inefficient uh, in terms of uh, optimizations for paths specifically if you want to just like deploy a client side application a spa is nothing but just a client side application without any uh, server side component to it you don't really need a full fledged uh, environment to run it on where you want to have like where you would have numerous other components running like you don't really need that much compute or that much power so that's why it, the current methodologies are a bit of uh, let's say an overkill probably uh, for the lack of a better word uh, the current development life cycles are also pretty complex and frankly at times very inefficient for small application deployments and the a, a big a big headache for developers is claiming url namespaces so if you want to uh, claim a namespace for say the existing uh, application in an existing route you have to do manual mappings in say your f5 or akamai or whatever other solution that you're uh, using uh, it should not be that difficult it should be as simple as you know just saying that slash something and this is my namespace uh, so that is another challenge uh, that needed to be solved so having said that what does parship provide uh, parship by nature it tries to provide efficient uh, deployment of spas so you can deploy any app to any environment in within a matter of seconds you don't need to spend minutes or hours uh, sitting on your app deployments so every time you do a small tiny change to your application you don't want to wait for say 15 or 20 minutes for your application to be deployed on your qa server so that you can say okay that's good if the change took you two minutes to make, it should not take like 20 minutes to deploy. Um, Pasha also does uh, provide uh, configuration options for bootstrapping uh, spas and also uh, improving the spa developers experience uh, as a whole. And by default, it comes with uh, support for chroming via server side includes. So it does have uh, and Apache server side includes support within it. So if you want to have your header and footer components, or for that matter, any other component injected directly into your spa via SSI, you can do that. Uh, it has its own routing and namespace management. Uh, you can uh, easily deploy your spas to any uh, route that you want to within your own namespace. Uh, it it is very easy to integrate Sparship with your CI CD lifecycle and validation uh, processes. Uh, probably in the future, we'll also look into uh, like integrating better with some of the, the existing CI solutions out there. But right now, if you want to do integrate Sparship into your own lifecycle, you can directly use the Sparship as CLI to do that. We'll be talking about that later. So the other uh, important thing is, uh, it is it is layered on top of existing sites pretty easily and uh, most importantly you can run it on openshift it runs on openshift by default so uh, having said that uh, just to clarify what sparship isn't so sparship isn't a general purpose application platform like we have openshift uh, for that like for applications with application servers we have other solutions also like for java and python applications you will get dedicated application platforms to do this sparship isn't that uh, sparship isn't opinionated about front-end tech choices 
you can use whatever uh, technical stack you want to use. At the end of the day, Kashu really does not care about it. It just cares about your final deployment. Uh, it is not a replacement for things like the Create React app or Vue CLI, etc. It does not try to be that. It is not that. Uh, it is only focused on doing one thing and doing that thing really well, and that is deploying and hosting your single page application. So uh, with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Jared for a quick demo and uh, discussion on the architecture of Spaceship. So yeah, over to you, Jared. All right, thanks a lot, Sayak. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. So I have a wide monitor, uh, but I have the, the uh, font turned up, so hopefully everyone can see. Um, terminal window. I'm going to do. I'm going to run through kind of an end-to-end -end demo of Spaceship and the platform itself. So. Uh, and I'm going to run through creating, a, you know, creating a simple example spa, um, deploying it through all your environments, uh, initializing it and deploying it through all your environments. Um, and, and then I'll talk about the architecture a little bit. So first of all, uh, this is the, the this is the spa ship manager. So spa ship comes with a manager, and right now it's mostly used for viewing all of your spas for a specific uh, website. Uh, and, and what um, version or tag is deployed in each environment. So uh, you have one manager and you have it configured for each of your environments. So let's say you have like a four, a four environment setup. So dev, QA, stage, prod. Uh, and, and then you have your spas, which have a name and a path. Uh, so here's a list of all the spas we have currently running in our, this is our MVP reference implementation of Spaceship, um, and, and anyone in, inside Red Hat can play around with it if they want. Uh, it's You just log in with SSO, uh, and then um, you generate an API key, and I, 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 uh, I can explain more about that um, after if you want. You can send me a question. Um, anyone who wants to play with it can. It's open. Um, so let me, let me show um, creating a new spa and deploying it. So, Let's say I wanted to, and I, I'm going to use just a, a we, we talked about Vue a little bit. Vue is a very popular uh, JavaScript app framework for single page apps, you know, similar to React, um, but simpler. So the um, thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put it at a new path. So so here's uh, the front end of Spaceship. Right now we have it. Um, we have the catalog at redhead.com app deployed at the root here. But let's say I wanted to deploy a new spa at a new path called uh, Hello View. A view, a view Hello World. Uh, right now, it's not going to be found, right? Because this this path doesn't exist yet. Okay, so this is the this comes into the namespace claiming that we talked about. So let's go ahead and make a uh, and make it. So. I, here I have very very simple spa. Uh, it just has a JavaScript file, an index.html file, a CSS file, and a package JSON. Uh, all front-end developers should recognize this kind of setup here. So, um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to use the Spaceship CLI to initialize a new Spaceship app. So all I have to do is uh, Spaceship in it and ask me what's my name so I'm going to call this hello you I'm going to give it a path that it's going to live at hello the single page app I'm going to say no for now but that's uh, uh, that, that that is for doing friendly URLs which I'm going to say no for this one but so now that what that did is it generated a, a spa ship uh, YAML file, big file. Um, me, um, I'll just show it so you can see what it has. It just basically made it just generated a YAML file with those um, with that data. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this and deploy it. So um, in the index.html. 
it just has a message here. So I'm going to change the message from hello view to hello red hat. Okay. Now I'm going to use npm pack, which is built into npm. All it does is it packages up your packages up your spa, and then I'm going to deploy it. So spa ship deploy. I want to give it the environment. Uh, I'm going to clear my screen too, so I'm not at the bottom. So, uh, ship, deploy, the environment going to be targeted is dev. And then you can optionally give it a reference, which this could be a git ref or a tag name. I'm just going to say 1.0. It's basically just so you know what version of your spa or what branch of your spa is deployed in a given environment. Um, and then I'm going to give it the package that uh, npm pack created. And now I'm going to deploy it. So it's deploying. And uh, this is all oh, duplicate key. So um, I had done this before. And now I have a duplicate key. So let me just change, make this more unique. Um, uh, I'm going to call this view app. There we go. And pack. Run this again. So, apologize for that. For this now. There we go. So now it worked. So, well, if you if if a and this is kind of a protection we put in. Actually, this is a, this is a good thing I showed because if someone's already deployed an app with a given name and path. You shouldn't be able to deploy on top of that, and that's why I gave me an error because an app was already deployed at that from a previous example. So I had to make it unique, um, and now now it's successfully deployed. Um, and the the key and now before I move on, now I'll come over here to my path. I called it Hello View App, and boom, there it is. So it's deployed in Dev. And it says hello red hat so it's, it took the change that we created now if i look back at my uh list of applications here in the manager i should see here's my hello view it's at uh oh this is not um let me refresh this also um there it is hello view app so here's the app I just deployed in this details its name, its path. And right now I've only deployed it in dev and it shows the version when it was deployed. So let's say I want to deploy it across my other environments. So I deployed it in dev. I checked it out. It looks good. Let's deploy it in QA. Now just change the environment to QA. It's done. And you'll notice that that took less, you know, uh, just maybe one second to deploy. And now it's in QA. There you go. Boom. It's in QA. All right. Check it out in QA. Let's go to stage. Deploy my spot to stage. Now look at the look at the manager. It should show it's uh deployed in stage now. Here's the app running in stage. And finally, everything's good in stage, test, tested it out, we're ready to go to prod, engine by environment to prod, deploy it, and it is done. Now I come back to the manager, and it's deployed in prod. <clears throat> so, you know, and you know, just... If you, if you kind of combined how long the deployments took across each environment, it's it's extremely fast. Like when we back was talking about efficiency, right? You don't have to wait for for any any overhead stuff, right? It just instantly deploys it. It's an it's almost an it's you know, it's, it's seconds instead of uh, minutes or or even hours to deploy across your environment. So it's very efficient for spas. And the reason we can do that is we've optimized the platform based on the the properties that spas are just static files. There's no server attached to them. There's no uh, back end at all. It's just HTML, JavaScript, CSS, all packaged together, right? 
so because of that unique unique attribute it lets us optimize it to deploy extremely extremely fast um, and so you can see have the really fast feedback loop and and quick deployments so so that is uh, the demo so um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the architecture so I'm gonna present here and here is so we have a we have a detailed architecture which when you you know look at the, that link in the slide deck it, it'll show you but that one will make you go cross-eyed it's uh, if it's it's very busy got a lot of it has every part of the, the platform um, and if you want to look at that you can check it out after this um, in the slide deck um, but here's a, this is the this architecture is the simplified only the very important parts uh, at a very high level <laughs> so like we said spa ship is meant to do two things really well which is hosting and deployment pause so this kind of calls out the two those two main elements of spa ship the hosting and the deployment um, and 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 that well everything is running on top of OpenShift, the background. So <clears throat> from the hosting side, when, when a client makes a request, uh, it will, first it hits a router. The router is what handles that URL name spacing, the paths that I was showing where you can put it at any path. Um, and it will also do stuff where if you have an existing site, um, it can, the router can decide if this is a spa ship path or it needs to proxy it on to like a downstream origin or not. Um, the router then uh, then goes to not to the API. This is fake. This actually should be Apache. Um, so we'll fix that. Uh, and there, <clears throat> there's just an Apache server running here that uh, that it, it, it's it's serving the static files. Because that's all spas are, right? Spas are HTML, JavaScript, CSS, like we said. So they don't need a they don't need an application server. All they need is an HTTPD server, um, and that's this part here. So this should say Apache. I apologize, it doesn't. But um, anyway, so that's the hosting part, the router and a, and an Apache server. The deployment part is the manager, which we showed, and um, the API, which is what does the deployments. Uh, when you package up and deploy a spa, it goes through the API and it and it uh, and it writes the files to file storage. And that's it from a high level. It's very simple, uh, simplified version. There's a lot of other stuff going on, which you can see in the, the detailed architecture. So that is a uh, high level architecture. Okay, so when, when can you, when could people start using it? So we did the MVP reference implementation, um, which we completed in April, which you can test, which I uh, mentioned at the beginning. Um, we're doing a pilot on catalog.reddit.com, which is in progress right now, uh, and that is, um, you know, scheduled to be done around the end of June. Um, and then we'll do like a GA shortly after we complete the pilot. Uh, and you can, you know, it's on GitHub, so uh, you can start checking out the documentation and the project, of course, it's open source, so um, you can set it up. And that is it. So now we can uh, move on to questions. Okay, thank you, Jared, very much. And thank you both for the excellent presentation about SpaShip. So we'll jump right into questions. And first question is going to be from Roberto, who asks, can SpaShip be integrated with Code Ready? Yeah, Code Ready. Yes, it, it it can be like it, it can run on anything that can run containers. I think so. Uh, like it, it, like in the architecture, it's uh, it's running for 
four containers, four pods, the router, Apache, and uh, the, the manager and the API. So yeah, you could totally set it up on Code Ready. I think your mic should be on now. Go ahead and give it a try. Um, sorry, I didn't uh, hear you properly, Brian. Your mic is on, so you can go ahead and give uh, okay. it a try. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so I was uh, saying that, yeah, like Jared already answered the question, so. Just making sure. All right, great. So uh, Merrick asks, what's going to be the message for SpaShip? Um, is this basically like a runtime for the OpenShift container platform or a runtime on top of Node or or what? What's the What's sort of the classification for this? Um, so I would uh, runtime. I would say it's 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 a platform for spas. That's the name. That's the message I would give. Like, um, it's it's a deployment and hosting platform for single page applications that runs on top of any you know, whatever kind of uh, infrastructure platform you have that you that it can run on anything. But it, we have it running on OpenShift now. So. Um, I think okay. that I, I'm not sure. Yeah, so that's how I would answer so, that. You can uh, think of it as, so it's nothing but a deployment uh, platform. It's an application that runs on top of OpenShift itself. So uh, I don't think uh, the classical uh, classification uh, would be good enough to justify uh, what it exactly does mm. so it, it's not really a runtime for OCP because uh, it's uh, a runtime would imply that it's just a runtime environment whereas Parship does much more than that it provides routing and uh, it also provides uh, the entire environment management so there is also another aspect to our, to Sparship, there are actually quite a few more aspects to Sparship that we did not go into the details of for this, for the purposes of this demo. Uh, but it allows you to also handle your environments uh, from a single interface. So I wouldn't classify it as just a runtime, but yeah, it's it allows you to probably run your single page applications. Uh, in a in a very simplistic way, it's 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 kind of like a I'm not going to, I, may have some technical issues on IX end. Um, while we're working those out, we'll move on to the next question from Joshua, who asks, um, "You talk about the client." But there will almost always be a back end that it needs to talk to in order to be useful. So how do you address that? Yeah, so Spaship, so just like any uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. So yeah. all yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. Like a spa a spa without some sort of back end is just static data that doesn't have any doesn't have very much usefulness, right? So the real power of spas comes uh, because of, of microservices and, and REST services that, that provide the content inside of them, right? So mm -hmm. those services are outside of the SpaShip platform, right? All of those services are services that run in OpenShift, you know, and um, and the spa in the spa makes, you know, uh, real-time, like, re requests asynchronously to those services to fill in the content of the spa. So um, that's the pattern that spas use. That's how um, we use them, you know, on Red Hat properties today. And the pla the SpaShip platform itself is only meant for deploying and hosting the, the spa files and not, not uh, it, it has no, it, 
the the services that they call out is outside of the scope of SpaShip. But that is that is how it works. Okay. Um, Andrew asks, um, maybe namespace is an overloaded term in OpenShift context. Seems like uh, SpaShip is talking more about paths within a domain yes. where an app is exposed. Yes, URL URL context. Yeah, URL namespace. It's yeah, namespace is overloaded in this context. We're talking about URL paths. Yes. Path namespaces. Okay. And the reason reason we call that out is because today, if someone creates a new a new single page app, and they want it, they say, "I want to have a new spa at accessarea.com slash uh, slash internal slash support slash hub or something like that." Right? We have to create a mapping for that path to the OpenShift origin that that SPA is deployed on. That's a lot of work, manual work that we have to do. If SpaShip, once SpaShip is running in front of it, that's, SpaShip handles that for you. You don't have to do any work. It just immediately uh, handles claiming URL paths. You can call it uh, route management if you want, if that makes it clearer for you, or yep. path management for that matter. Okay, um, next question from Evan. So is the proposition here that users will be running enough SPAs on the OpenShift container platform that they will require a tool like this to manage them versus something like S2I with Nginx or you know something similar? Yeah, yeah, that's a super good question. So um, we actually, we we started creating spa ship because of internal need um, because inside of red hat we had many app teams creating spas and none of them had a really good way of deploying of, of, of hosting and deploying them uh, and uh so well and is so, so the answer to that is yes we we already have that and inside of red hat we have many spas in the queue that are trying to make it onto our prep on, onto our red hat properties like access.com connect.redhat.com catalog.redhat.com um, these are some of the red hat red property uh, red hat web properties that have a bunch of spas being developed and in the queue and no place to deploy or host them we we have we have openshift we have managed platform which we are using today but that requires setting up a whole new origin just for tiny little HTML, bit of HTML files running an, H an HTTPD server, right? So it's overkill to do that. Uh, uh, and then to deploy them, you have to build the container, run the builds, let the Kubernetes do all of its stuff, right? Um, where it does, it, it's not needed for deploying spat static files. So, um, so the answer is yes, and the the we we the reason we know this is because we're facing this ourselves and and addressing it, and all of the the front end dev teams um, for our web properties are like are they have spas already? Like we need spa ship now, like and we're 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 working as fast as we can. They're like, when can we have spa ship? Because we really we have all these spas we need to deploy, right? So um, so yes, the demand is already there for it. Okay, excellent. So next question from Merrick, is hosted documentation for SpaShip available somewhere? So, so for SpaShip, uh, right now we have documentation ready, but mostly it's uh, internally available. We are going to be publishing all of those documentations uh, on, in two places. Uh, one is GitHub. Uh, and the other place is on the sparship.io domain. We we have the domain with us, but we have not yet set up the the uh, the web property uh, for uh, sparship over there. But that's coming soon, and we will be deploying the documentation over there. For now, if anyone is interested, uh, our readme's like the entire sparship doc project is very well documented. You can go through the readme's for the the individual packages and 
for the overall package as well and you should be good. it should be good enough to start with um and in addition i'll also add that the api has generated documentation oh yeah i put a link yeah. to that and but this is just for the api endpoints so um wagger so uh i put a link in the chat for that and we'll put a link in the mojo page for that as well um excellent so Moving on to the next question from Paul. What if your production environment is on a separate cluster? Ah, uh, yeah, so that's a good question. So let me, well, I could answer that by actually sharing my screen if that helps. No so uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. So, so you can configure your Spawship API to point at any endpoint, but it, it doesn't matter what cluster it's on. Um, uh, share here. So, um, so here's the the Spawship Manager app. So you have this Environments tab, right? And all this is really just a way of viewing what all your how your environments are defined. So, um, so let's say your your production is on a different cluster. You would you would set your the API endpoint for your Spawship API for that cluster to be whatever a URL or domain it lives at and then it would deploy to it so it's all based on rest services so um, as long as you have the endpoint configured you can deploy to any API no matter where. that's how the environments are set up um, just to add to that uh, the the core uh, design of Spaship was made in a way uh, so that it's as flexible as possible. Um, so you can have uh, multiple clusters based in multiple places and you can, all that you need to do is just configure the, the endpoints and that should be good. Okay, great. Thank you for the question and thank you for the great demo for the answer. We have time for a few more questions. We're doing pretty well today. So we're gonna go to Andrew who um, asks, I assume multiple pods need to, you know, have rewrite to file storage. What are you going to, uh, what are you using to provide storage to the OpenShift persistent volume with RWX, uh, you know, uh, permissions? Yeah, so um, you, as long as you have a volume you can write to, you can use whatever, whatever type of storage you want. Um, for us specifically, we're using our own internal Red Hat platform. Um, it's called the Manage, Manage Platform, and we have uh, these these NFS, like an NFS volume that we can mount that writes to, that we have read-write access to. Um, and uh, that's, that's, how we're, that's how we're doing it internally, but uh, on OpenShift, you know, any kind of storage volume that you want, uh, you can set up to have rewrite um, and mount it at the path at the path or the uh, HTTP server to use it as its document root, and you should be good. And also, uh, another note to that is uh, just as a bit of curiosity and fun. Uh, we also have tried, like you don't need to have uh, only pods configured uh, to have persistent volume storage, read write access and uh, run it. Uh, you can run it on any type of uh, file system, uh, which not, well, I won't say any type, any type of normal file system to which you have read write access. Like it does not only have to be open shift. It can be anything else as well. Okay, great. So Merrick asks, is it possible to use technology such as Istio for features such as dark releases, routing and, and load balancing, et cetera? In other words, can we just use OpenShift concepts for routing and plumbing and TLS? That's a super interesting question. I think I think that's definitely something we want to look at. Uh, I, I think we haven't we haven't um, 
explored that very much yet, but because um, it's ITSEO and Service Mesh is pretty new to us as far as internally, since we don't we don't have it today for our internal platform. Um, I'm I'm hoping it'll be in the the newer updated versions that we get. Uh, but we, I, I definitely think that's a very interesting thing uh, to look into. Right now, we, we don't have, uh, we haven't explored it yet. But um, the load balancing part uh, is, you know, relying on OpenShift load balance, you know, scaling uh, up the pod. So all of the requests come in through the router, which is the first point of, of SPA ship and and that is that's a pod running which you know if it, if it gets a lot of load scale up the pods just like you normally like you normally would for any high load thing in OpenShift and, and let OpenShift handle all the load balancing um, so yeah and uh, so yeah I, I, I guess my answer would be we want to look into it but we haven't yet Okay, Roberto asks, in his experience developing uh, SPA, you also need to have a good understanding of the, the modeling view controller uh, pattern. Um, is this something you could address? Um, I, 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 I'm not really sure uh, how uh, we can address model view uh, controller architecture patterns because Spaship does not really go into the details of what architecture a spa has been implemented upon. It it focuses on the deployment and hosting. So I'm I'm, I'm not sure how we can actually uh, I, I don't think it's currently in the scope of Spaship to look into making sure our MVC uh, architecture is followed or not within an application. Yeah, spa ship doesn't doesn't care what patterns you use in your spa. Use whatever you want. It's not opinionated about that. It just deploys and hosts. Um, MVP patterns. Uh, M I'm sorry, MVC pattern. Um, it, yeah. So so I guess the answer is we don't. Uh, yeah, spa is not doing. Uh, doesn't care what patterns you use. That's what I'm trying to say. You can use any pattern you want. Uh, to make it all one flat file if you wanted, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> Bosship won't care. Uh, it doesn't get opinionated about your code. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Looks like we have time for one last question, and this will be from Tom, who asks, why the design choice for a platform to deploy spas uh, to uh, or with versus something like a spa operator? <clears throat> well, we want to. So that's a good question. Um, we want to have. We want to make Spaship an operator. We do want to do that. We don't have operators today inside of uh, inside of our platform. Uh, so I keep coming back to our internal Red Hat platform, um, which is running on OpenShift 3.11 right now, uh, or three. I'm not exactly sure what version, but it's not for, it's not version four. I know that. Uh, so um, we don't have operator support ourselves yet. Once we do get that, we will. We definitely want to make a spa ship operator. That is something we want to do. We've talked about it. We're like, this would be really cool as an operator. Uh, so that's that's part of our future plans. All right, great. Well, gentlemen, thank you again so much for the presentation about this really cool up and coming open source project and and of course all the demo work um, and we really appreciate you coming on to community central today thank you for having us thank you brian thank you everyone for having us all right and with that we'll close out another edition of community central we'll be back in one week with probably the final episode of this season of community central until then everyone be safe and be well